Hi, I've changed locations. My camera overheated and I decided that I didn't want to be in a stressful parking lot anymore. So I came back here. But I'm going to finish my meditation with you here. I apologize for the ch ch choppy videos. It's a dedicated experience to watch these. Um, so I was talking about brain activity. And I was saying that you can imagine all of the different thinking patterns that you have as a sort of shape in space, right? So I was dancing with my fingers and I was saying that when I was going to the dentist, my brain was making a shape like this. The neural activity in my mind was making a shape like this one. Of course, it didn't actually look like this. It looked like trillions of cells in an integrated, coordinated dance talking to one another, right? Thousands of moving pieces instead of two hands. But we're going to use hands to try to imagine what this looks like. So my brain is making a certain shape and, I, uh, and that shape models the world. It resembles the world in an abstract way. It says, this is what you think the world is going to be like. Right? And it makes that prediction, and then I, I can, I, that prediction is part of me, because it's my brain, but it's also the world. Right? It's, it's modeling the world, and I feel like I'm in tune with the world when my model of the world matches what I get back from it. But then I get something new back from it that I didn't expect. Right? And the dentist says, you're going to have to come back next week because you ate up your time. And I get really upset, and it's like this new thought pattern. Like, I'm going like this, and then the dentist is, is can I do it? I'm going like this, and the dentist is like, no, I can't, I don't have the coordination. But I'm doing one thing. I have this this model of the world, and then I get this new input activity, like, boop, 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 All this imposition from, from the outside world saying, no, what you expected is going to change. And um, these brain processes, they have a kind of inertia to them, you know? Like, the my expectations of reality, they, they're sort of like, they're a closed loop, and they're like, we're expecting, we're expecting, and they, they loop, and they loop, and they loop, and they loop, and when this new source of information comes in, saying, no, this has to be adjusted, it's like a collision. Like, you can imagine that as a kind of psychic collision between two opposing forces. Um, and collisions are painful, they're destructive, right? And so I have an expectation of reality that meets this new piece of information and it gets crushed. And then I have to build a new expectation of reality. And that expectation of reality has lower value for me, right? I don't want to go back to the dentist again. So it's, it's like I have to readjust the way I think the world is. And th the fact that the world is a little worse is one thing, but it's the readjustment process that is actually the most painful because because we're surprised and and we have to rewrite a small part of ourselves because um, all of our neural activity are part of ourselves so we're, we're it's like part of us gets destroyed when we learn news like this and then we have to spend some time healing and 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 re recuperating and, and re adjusting our model of reality um, and I think that's what meditation is for right meditation gives us the space to readjust our models of reality to to the new one right and to to literally quite literally rebuild ourselves allow allow you know this activity and this activity to integrate into one another to form a new pattern that is more reflective of the world and even though it's you know perhaps slightly more disappointing than the original one it once it becomes me, it doesn't really matter that it's slightly more disappointing because it's me, and and so I can I can be with it. Um, so I think this is what meditation does. I think it it gives us the space to allow our mind to rebuild itself after the collisions of the day, um, and this is why I, I started this meditation in in my parking, in the parking lot, in my car, right? Because I don't think that it's this activity that needs to be reserved for idyllic ashrams and monasteries where like the, where the, the stresses of the world are, are physically kept away from you by, by a geographic barrier. Um, I think that it's really important to, to learn how to have these recuperative cycles in your mind when you're in really stressful situations. And so for me, talking is a meditation just as much as not talking is. I'm reflecting and I'm rebuilding my model of the world to adjust to something that was surprising and disappointing. Um, so 
that I think it sometimes it's useful to to visualize what's actually going on in your mind, right? And of course, this is this is a very wave hand waving. Like I'm waving my hands, but like to recognize that your mind is is full of all of these patterns, all of these shapes of activity, little dances, right? Thousands of dances going on in your mind, and some of them conflict, and some of them are internally generated, what you want, and some of them are externally generated, what is. And, and it's this challenge of, of integrating all of these dances into a pattern that suits you, that is adapted to your environment. Um, and it can be painful to, to throw out a huge portion of you know, work, thinking work that you've done, preparing for something and, 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 you know, imagining how it's going to be and, okay, this is how everything else is going to fit into that thing. And then all of a sudden it gets gashed away and you have to rebuild it. And that's painful. Um, and it's really important to give ourselves the space for that painful process to occur and to not, not get carried away in it. I think that was... That was the other thing. So if I'm going to return to my dentist story, um, I got really upset that I would have to go back to the dentist and that I wasted my money on headphones. Um, I got upset about this. I got unreasonably upset about it. Um, but I, because it was still a little thing, and as I'm getting older, I get upset like this more, right? I've got a, a more a bank of experiences like this to draw from where I can figure out how to adjust to them better and um, I think in the past what I might have done is just gotten really resentful and angry and and sulked for a while and that's what I'm doing now I'm sulking but I'm sulking productively right I'm making this video to share my experience with you um, so I'm using this experience as as a learning experience an experience to reflect and figure out um, how to how to do this better in the next time and that's part of this readjusting expectations it's like a totally different like I'm not just readjusting my expectations about the dentist I'm readjusting my expectations of like the way I should deal with <laughs> problems in my life um, So sometimes it's nice just to sit. So I guess what I realized I could do when I was sitting in that dentist chair and I was being really upset and there was drilling going on in my mouth, and I was just angry and upset, and just like really not happy. There's music in my ears, right? I got the headphones, I might as well put on the music. I was listening to the Spirited Away soundtrack. Um, and I realized that this was kind of like a perfect enclosed experiment on myself and my responses, right? Like I was noticing, I was noticing that I was having this, this really large stress response, and I was, I was angry. Um, and, and, and felt cheated. And I was like, okay, well, you're going to have to come back here, right? <laughs> so, so now you have, you've got this sort of natural experiment where you, you can compare your response to this experience with the response to the experience that you're going to have next week. It's going to be very similar. You're going to drill in your mouth. You're going to be in some capitalist place. Um, but it's like a, it's an enclosed thing. It doesn't really have that much bearing on the rest of my life, you know, where I live, who my friends are, where I'm getting money. I mean, it's related, but it's like, okay, you're going to the dentist. It's like this little box of experience. It's not a pleasant experience, but it's a little box of experience. And the way that you can best deal with that little box of stress is to, is to figure out how to integrate it into your life. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so rather than, rather than just get carried away and being upset, right, that's what I would have done in the past. I'm losing my train of thought, I'm getting back to it. What I would have done in the past is I just would have gotten really upset and sulky and been, been stressed out for a while. And that's, that's basically what's happening now. Um, but I'm using it as a, as a chance to observe my stress responses and be like, oh, so when something unexpected happens, what do you do? Well, you fixate on certain details, you get flashbacks. So that's an interesting thing to know, 
right? So there was the stressful thing that happened in the dentist office, and then I was walking through the mall, and I could barely focus on what was going on in the mall because I was just remembering this thing that had just happened to me, and it was really unpleasant remembering. There was this bad thing that happened, and then it happened again and again and again. So you get flashbacks of this stressful thing, and the flashbacks send you on this loop. And I was thinking, well, okay, so those flashbacks are happening. That That's a signifier that something really bad has just happened. I'm stressed out, right? And I'm fixated on it. I'm focusing on it. And, and it's not really very helpful to be like, I'm not going to have flashbacks anymore. No thinking about those things. I'm just going to get over it, right? It's done. I'm done. You know, forget it, mind. I don't need to remember those things. Like, that's not... That's just not gonna happen. You can't control your mind like that. Be like, okay, so I have flashbacks, and just sort of like watch that and accept that, and be like, oh, so this is what my mind does when I get upset. Like this is what my mind does when something unexpectedly bad happens. It remembers what's going on because it's trying to to rebuild itself, and it has to rebuild itself by incorporating this really unpleasant part of reality. So okay, what's that process? Well. You, you're trying not to think about it, you're trying to get on with your day, do the next thing, and then this, this interjection happens, right? This like thought just like bulldozes in, so you're all, I'm here, right? So that was like what I was saying before, where like this is your reality, and then the new reality comes in, bulldozes in, and it, it's, it's crappy. And so the same thing's happening when I'm trying to get over the experience as well. Like, okay, I don't want to think about the dentist anymore. I don't think, want to think about that new appointment. I just want to get home and get on with the rest of my day. Uh, and... And, and But then there's this barrage, comes back in, comes back in, pokes in, and, and um, this, this pattern, right, is, is precisely what a meditation teacher will tell you, right, in a, in a slightly different context. They'll say, you know, like a, a classic Buddhist meditation teacher will say, okay, sit and focus on your breath, right, and so we sit. We focus on our breath, right, and um, the instruction is focus on your breath. Don't think about anything else. Of course, thoughts are going to arise, as they will, but just sort of let them come and let them pass. And when you realize that you've been distracted by a train of thought, then return to the breath, right? So that pattern of like having a kind of focus, a kind of stability, inner, inner stability, right? Which I'm gonna represent as this, right? This is my Maximus pattern and I'm doing it, and I'm doing it, right? And I'm, I'm at one with the universe, Ooh, right? I'm doing my Maximus thing, right? <sighs> And then something interjection, something pokes its way in. And I can follow that poke, right? Oh, oh, and then I'm over there. Or I can be like, okay, it's here, it's coming, it's coming, oh, now it's going. There we go, and I'm still here. Um, and we can practice that in a very controlled environment like this, where you're sitting, probably in bed, right? You're sitting in bed, looking at your computer screen, listening to this guy talk. Um, it's very distant, different from being in a dentist office having drills in your mouth or walking back in a mall and, and there's all these ads telling you to buy things and you feel so guilty for, for listening to the ads and buying the thing that you didn't need. And, and um, So, different environment, but same pattern. You know, there's this same thing of like, the thought comes in, it grabs you, and then, and then you have a choice of what to do with it, right? And you can, you can just release it and let it go, or you can be grabbed. And, um, not very good at not being grabbed. <laughs> but this is what I'm doing. I am I'm making this video for myself and for you to try to improve my skill at making that choice. Um, and a lot of that is is doing reflection and, and, and really breaking down what happened. I'm telling you about a you know a ten minute period of my life maybe, but I'm breaking it down and going over like what thought happened and what happened next and what so that I can understand it. So that the next time this happens, the next time a thought comes in and grabs me by my face, I can say, oh, okay, go. Right? Rather than being pushed by it. Um, so that's what I think meditation is. I think meditation is this practice of watching yourself and watching how your mind works so that when a stressful situation happens, like you're at the dentist and you're told bad news, you can adjust to it quickly, right? And because there's there's a kind of destruction that's going to occur, your expectations get dashed, and then you have to rebuild them. And rebuilding them can happen quickly, or it can take a long time because you keep on brooding. Oh, I'm so angry. I'm never going to go to this dentist's office again. I'm going to rip him a new one and tell him all my thoughts, and I'm so pissed at him, right? So 
it's it's getting really adapted adept at having your expectations dashed and then rebuilding them quickly. So having them being flexible and, and be able to be destroyed. It's not about being confident and assured and like never changing your mind on anything. Quite the opposite. It's a kind of strength that comes from flexibility and um, having your models of the world constantly reappraised and, and being okay with that. Right. So that's been a long preamble. <laughs> I've spoken for almost half an hour. Uh, I'm really grateful that you've listened to me for all of this time uh, and that you really care what I have to say. I think that's, that's a really, really remarkable gift for someone to give to me, someone that maybe I don't know to give to me. Say, oh, I'm going to listen to you for half an hour while you, while you get over this stressful experience that you had. I'm going to help you through it. That's amazing. <laughs> that's really amazing. So thank you. Um, I'm going to make one more video. This video is actually going to be a silent video. I mean, I'll, I'll maybe interject a few words here and there, but I want it to be 10 minutes of us sitting together and um, sharing this virtual space. You know, I'm here, I'm in this box, <laughs> this box, you're in another box, but we're together. We're separated by time, I'm recording this, we're separated by space, you're in some other part of the world, but we're still together, we're sharing this experience. Um, and I think one of the best ways to appreciate that is to do it in silence. So I'm going to make a new video now where we can sit together and appreciate this time that we got to spend together and watch our thoughts and see how they work. Okay, thanks. <laughs>